Can y'all yeah. speak on the love outside of y'all family inside of Alabama, though, man? I mean, what were the folks saying from Montgomery to Birmingham to Mobile about y'all, man? Ooh. Unconditional. Unconditional yeah. love. love. Like, anywhere we go in the state of, in, in the state of Alabama, in yeah. the city we in, it's like, and then the thing's so funny, it's like they got so much love that we could have been just seeing them maybe a week ago. The next time we come, they still, it's like they've just seen us the first time. Yeah. yeah Taking yeah, pictures, yeah. autographs, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, in Belma, it's unconditional love. Yes, sir. Unconditional. Yeah. Do you do do you think that, that okay, you know, we know the fans, you know, uh, in Belma love y'all. But do you think that the industry as a whole give y'all the props that y'all really deserve? Mm -mm. I don't think so. And I think that that's because we ain't get that push like a lot of other right. artists got mm -hmm. while it's going commercial or just having a major machine behind them to get that promo out there so people can know. A lot of folks didn't know about Dirty, you know what right. I'm saying? Like when we came out, we hit hard first, but right. the follow-up didn't hit as hard, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we went through some struggles far as dealing with Universal, getting off Universal, dealing with rap a lot, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And once you going from a major label to a independent label, right. The budget's a little different, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. The way they, they, they do stuff is a little different, the way they move. And I think the way rap a lot moved back then was more of a, how they probably moved when they was dealing with ghetto boys. Mm. They, they couldn't they couldn't get with the time as far as knowing how to promote a southeastern group like yeah. Dirty from Belma. Right. They was more of a southwest. Texas. Texas. Right. Yeah. Nevada, California, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So I don't think they kind of knew how to really market us. Ben, yeah. oh, go, go, go ahead, go with it. Yeah, when you were, when y'all were with Universal, do as you reflect back on everything, was there some things that maybe y'all didn't want to do? Because I had that problem when we were dealing with Sony. They were trying to get us to do those commercial records. But I, I was kind of, a lot of the stuff y'all saying, me and Nino did the same type shit. Mm, right, you, you see what right, I'm saying? Right. And so when, when we did get that, our foot in the door to get that chance, we we really didn't know. You know, we, we, we were still on the mindset of, you know what I'm saying? Well, this is what got us here. So we going to stick to this right here. Right. No, nah, I don't want to do no record with Foxy Brown. Mm, no, nah, I don't want to do right. no, you, you see what I'm saying? Right, right. As y'all reflect back, was that something that you could have did a little different to make it even go farther? Uh, I think it, we could have, but I think, like he said, um, even with Universal, mm -hmm. Universal didn't know how to push us. We right. were so new and country, gators with socks pulled up to my knee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they ain't understand. And we was in Mark Classfield, uh, not Mark Classfield, Money and Avery office in New York. Mm. Like, they looking at us like, what in the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> we, we know it's good. Yeah. We know it's going to sell, but what the fuck to do with it? <laughs> so the so, so they this? put, they put, I think they put most of their oomph behind Nelly because we had to compete with Nelly. Mm -hmm. We had to compete with, with Baby them with Cash Money. Mm -hmm. like, like, it was so many people on Universal. I think what they did was just grab a handful of, throw it up against the wall. Throw it up against whoever stick. Whoever stick. That's who we gonna run with. Cause yeah. you you listen to the shit, and I ain't dissing Nelly, you know what I'm saying? But you listen to the shit Nelly was rapping and we was rapping. He was more palatable with the world. Commercial. Right. 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 That's what yeah. B like. So see, cause see, he tapped in. <laughs> so I was, I was on y'all. I was on y'all. He was on Nelly. Duh. So I mean, I'm yeah. glad okay, you brought that in. Go with me. I was a big ass dirty fan. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Uh, speaking of being a fan, what I loved about y'all is that y'all did what I call snapping as well as storytelling at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah, too. yeah, 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 yeah. Six deep creeping, man. Yeah, yeah. Storytelling. Break like that down right there when y'all said, "Let's get in this booth and tell some stories in this thing." Right, right. Well, I started with the storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every rap that I had ever written in my life, I I write it in a story. Okay. It was hard for me to even come out of that. Mm. That's why if you if you go back and listen to all our raps, every verse I'm telling a story. Mm. I learned that by coming up off of Slick Rick, yeah. mm -hmm. which was my the greatest, mm -hmm. and Dana Dane. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Then was my two mm -hmm. favorite rappers, third, fourth, fifth grade. Yeah. I honed my skills behind Big Daddy Kane, Dana Dane, mm -hmm. and Slick Rick, and I noticed all they did was told stories. Mm -hmm. So that's why I told stories. But when G came up, he pulled me out of the telling stories and just spitting real street shit. Yeah. 
now or, or then I learned to not do so much of a story but spit bars too. Yeah. But at the same time, it was a gift and it was a curse. But the gift was beautiful because now my storytelling ability got me writing screenplays. I write movies, uh, uh, dialogue, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I understand the concept of the plot, the climax, the end, you know? Yeah. So I vicariously taught myself to write. Yeah. And now I think my storytelling ability is, is it can't be challenged. I don't mind. give a fuck who out there rapping right now. Yeah. Me being 46 years old, my storytelling with music yeah. ain't nobody fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? From any rapper right now, you can name from Biggie to who else. I'm just naming Biggie because he's dead. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. But I don't want to name a rapper that's out now because yeah. I don't want no beef with <laughs> nobody. Yeah. yeah, we got it. We got it, but... Exactly. I don't want to feel like I'm disrespecting nobody. I'm with you. But storytelling, I hold, I reign supreme with storytelling. I know I do. Nah, I'm with you yeah, on that. Yeah. I'm with you on that. What about you, G? I, I pull him in it with 6D Creep. Come man. on now. Yeah. <laughs> I, like he said, I kind of came up under him, so I got the both both sides. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. My side plus the storytelling side from him, so I kind of integrated both of them together. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it is.